Hello and welcome to my channel, I am Bearded Dev, bringing you another SQL tutorial and in this video we're going to be looking at joining on nulls or nullable columns. So let's dive straight into it, I'll be using SQL Server for these examples, so let's head over to SQL Server Management Studio now. Okay, so I've arrived in SQL Server Management Studio, I have um, some create table statements here. Um, what I'm going to be doing is just creating a simple employees table uh, that includes MPID, which is marked as an identity in the primary key, uh, first name, middle name, last name, and position. Uh, and notice uh, that the middle name uh, is a nullable column. I'm also going to be creating another table, customers. Uh, and also note, if you do want to follow along with this video, I will be putting uh, this, this script or this piece of code in the description, so you'll be able to create these objects and follow along with the video. The customers table, very similar, has a customer ID, uh, which is an identity column, and that's also set as the primary key. It has the same first name, middle name, and last name, and a number of orders. What we're ideally trying to do within this video is find out the employees and the number of orders they've placed. Now, these tables are just created for this purpose. Uh, they're not tables that would be used in a production environment. They're just set up to go through the examples in this video. I'm just going to be inserting some values into employees and as we're going to be focusing on joining on nullable columns, um, we have four employees, um, but if we pay particular attention to the last employee, uh, Li Chen, and it has a, an, a null marker as his middle name. Uh, he also exists in the customers table as well, so we're just going to insert some sample customers. We're just working with a small amount of data Again, that's just for these examples. So I'm going to go ahead and execute that, which is going to create the, the tables for me and insert some data. Uh, and I'll just move on to a new screen where we can see the data that we have within the tables. And this gives us a good visibility of what we're actually trying to do. So we know from our table structure that we have no other option than to join on first name, middle name, and last name. Those are the only columns that match within these tables. And if I want to join these two tables together, those are the columns I will need to use. Uh, and if we have a look at the results, we have here um, two employees. So the, the top table is the employees table. So we have two employees, uh, Deirdre Elizabeth Walsh and Lee Chen, with a null marker as the middle name, who exist in both tables. What we're expecting when we write this query is to have those two customers returned. Okay, so let's go ahead and start. So I'm just going to remove those results off screen. And as a starting point, what we're simply looking to return is we want to return the employee name. Uh, so we'll take the first name from the employee table, the middle name, and the last name. And we want to join to the customers table to retrieve the number of orders column. So we're just going to simply start off with an inner join uh, to join customers, or we'll alias that as C, and then we're going to join on a number of predicates here, or matching predicates. So we're going to match the first name, and then we're going to match the middle name from both tables and lastly we're going to match the last name as well. Okay, so we're joining employees to customers, just missed that, my comma there, and we're joining on all the matching columns we can. Uh, they are voucher columns, 
uh, and its first name, middle name and last name. Those are the common columns that exist in both tables. So if we go ahead and execute that we can see we've got one result. But what I want to do at the moment is just have a look at this execution plan. We know that's incorrect and we'll come back to that shortly. So if I go ahead and execute this query. Now the ideal execution plan for this query is we're looking for an index scan on the employees table. So we want to have a look at all of the employees. And then ideally based on our, our joining information, our matching columns, we want to then perform a seek within the customers table. So we'll go ahead and create some supporting indexes for that. At the moment these tables are just have a clustered index on the primary key. So we're going to go ahead and create some supporting indexes for this query, some non-clustered indexes. So I'm going to create non-clustered index. I'm going to give that a name. Uh, this is going to be on the employees table. Uh, giving it a very verbose name to explain what it is. We're going to create creating it on the employees table and the columns we want to include are first name, middle name and last name and the index we're going to be creating on the customers table is, is pretty much equivalent um, but we're going to just change it slightly so just for simplicity rather than watching me type that out I'm just going to rename, sorry, copy and paste and then uh, then modify that slightly. Um, so this is going to be on the customers table. And again, we're going to include, the, the index is going to be based on first name, middle name and last name. But as we're pulling the number of orders column, we're also going to include that within the index. And what that means is the index will be based on first name, middle name and last name, but it will include the number of orders column for us. So the number of orders column won't be used as a seek. Um, we're not using that for matching purposes, but we do want to return that within the query. I'm going to go ahead and create these two indexes now. And I will also paste these, these index statements if that's something you're not familiar with in the description below. So let's just go ahead and execute this query again and then let's have a look at the execution plan. Okay, so it's deciding to do the table the other way around which is fine. Um, so it's actually performing a table scan on customers and then for each of those customers it's performing an index seek in the employees table. So the database engine has decided to use the customers as a starting point. Um, why that is, uh, is very complex logic but it might be that it's just a smaller table at this time. Uh, so for each customer it's scanning through so for the first customer for example it retrieves the first name middle name and last name and then it's going to the non clustered index and say give me all the matching values for this customer and join those together so that's the execution we are we are looking for we're looking for a scan of one table and a seek for matching rows in the other table now we move on to the next problem which is we're only actually returning one result and we know from the initial setup that we're expecting two results. We're actually missing Li Chen and his middle name is, is, is a null marker, it's set to, set to null if you like. So we're going to have a look at how we can handle this within the join. Now, a common approach would be to simply use is null or coalesce and we'll have a look at that now. I'm just going to hide the results grid and 
move those index statements to a new query window just to free up some space. So a common approach would be to use isnul or coalesce. I'll just use isnul in this example. So if the middle name is null, we're going to just replace that with a blank space. Um, and if blanks are possible, you may wish to replace this with something else, typically something that doesn't appear in the data. Okay, so what we're saying here now is if the middle name's null, replace it with blank in both tables, and that should give us a match. Remember when we're comparing if null is equal to null, we still get the value of unknown. So we only return, well, the query will only return true values, so that's why it's not being returned, even though looking at it, conceptually, you would think they are exactly the same values, but null isn't a value at all. It just represents a missing value. So that's why we have to wrap this within is null, or one of the approaches is to do this. So if we go ahead and execute this now, we can see we have got the correct results. We're, we're now returning our, our second employee, Lee Chen, that's also a customer in his number of orders. And let's take a look at the execution plan. So this is this has changed slightly. So we're still doing we're still doing the index scan of customers. We're using that as a starting point. Uh, the compute scalar operation here is just can is just the expression for the is null. Uh, and we've still got the index seek, which is ideal. But if we have a look at the details of the index seek, as you can see there on screen, when we're looking at an index seek, we're looking at the seek predicates. And what the seek predicates are is that's when it's going to the index and it's searching for the matches. And in this case, we only have first name. So that means it's going to customers and saying, what's this customer's first name? And then searching for a matching first name in employees in this case. It could be the other way around, depending on what the database engine wants to do, but either way would work fine. If one table was significantly larger than the other, uh, then it may choose to use a different table as a starting point. And then we have this extra predicate at the top. Uh, I can't quite move my mouse to highlight it, but if you can see that, um, so we've got seek predicates, above that we have output list, above that we have object, and then we have predicate. And what the predicate is doing here is once you've performed this index, this index seek operation, so once you've got all of the employees that match on first name to customers, we're then going to filter those results. So what this could mean is if we have um, a, a very common English or Welsh name such as, such as David, if we have hundreds of customers with the first name David, it means they're being returned at this point. And what the database engine is having to do once it gets those results is then filter them further to match on the middle name and the last name. So we've now made our query by applying manipulation to these columns. This then becomes non searchable, a non-searchable argument or sargeable. Uh, and what, whenever you apply manipulation to a column that's involved in an index, uh, although some basic manipulation is allowed, it means the query optimizer doesn't understand the value. So it's not, it's not the value that's actually stored in the index. It knows you've applied manipulation, so it just thinks, I can no longer use that. Um, even if you had, say, a simple integer value and you just went plus one or plus zero even, even if you went plus zero, so you, you had exactly the same value, it can no longer search that index efficiently. It just dismisses that it can use that. And now we're going to go through an approach of how we can look at, we can still join on a nullable column, we can still return the same results but again use the indexes efficiently. So instead of applying manipulation to the column, 
a, a much better approach and this will get you much faster results is to still match on middle name so we still have middle names that exist in the data um, but then we're going to also match on if both columns are null or have a null marker so we're going to we're going to open uh, parentheses we're going to have them uh, in fact we're going to open two parentheses within the first one we're going to have the match on middle name uh, and then we're going to combine these with or logic and we're going to say or uh, employee middle name is null and our customer middle name is also null so we have two matching conditions here so if the middle names match they're not they're not null and they match or they're both null and both of those now will return the same result that we had with is null so we've now got exactly the same result but if we look at the execution plan we've gone back to our starting point so there's no manipulation need to apply and if we look at the index seek operation again at the bottom we can see those seek predicates and we can see it's using all of the predicates within the index to perform that seek so in the early example I mentioned David it's no longer just matching on first name so it's no longer just searching for David it's also searching for a matching middle name it's also searching for a matching last name so that's a common downfall that you might come across when joining on nullable columns and we're now going to show a, a different example and this example is quite new to me it's quite exciting I've never ever considered using this before which is to use a set operator within the matching condition so I'm going to simply remove what we have at the moment um, and let's just hide the results grid and I'm going to use intersect to match the data and I'm going to type that out now so hopefully that will become clearer so I'm going to go on exists and I'm going to open parenthesis select E first name E middle name E last name and we're not going to specify a table here because it knows we're referencing the tables within the query and then we're going to say intersect which is a set operator which will return the matches the exact matches from both tables and then we're going to select C first name C middle name and C last name and then we're going to close that off so what we're saying here is when their first name middle name and last name matches in both sets we want to join now the interesting thing about intersect is when considering null markers or nullable columns they are considered equivalent so two nulls are equivalent in terms of set operators and that's what makes this quite interesting now this is something relatively new to me but I will be using uh, a lot in the future because I think it makes it a lot clearer and I've never combined set operators with joins not within this sense anyway so it's quite exciting and I recommend you having a go at using this and let's just make sure if we go ahead and execute we do get exactly the same results and how has that affected our execution plan last of all so it still looks correct and if we look at the index seek with the seek predicates we can see they're exactly the same really hope you have enjoyed that video if you have check out the other videos on my channel subscribe if you're not a subscriber already and hit that notification button to be made aware of when new videos are uploaded Thanks a lot for watching.